Dynamics 365 Marketing has a number of features to help you keep registrations organized that go beyond simply putting them into a structured list. Today we're going to highlight a handful of these features and show you how they make not only the data collection easier for you on the back end, but also enhance the experience for the front end user who wants to register on your website. So we're going to start by opening our internal D365 sales training event that we created earlier. And on the left hand side of the website inform section, we're going to see an option to set registration end date. This is simply a toggle field, yes or no. If we were to set it to yes and specify a date and time, then when that date and time passes, the, the ability to register for our event, event would disappear. And so what that looks like is like this. So here we have an event that's coming up, but there's no register now button, and it's been replaced by a custom message that we put into our text box. It just says, oops, this registration is closed. Stay tuned for future dates. That message would be typed directly into here. Now, for the purposes of this example, we're going to turn this off. We do not need an end date for this, so we've set it to no. On the right-hand side of the form, we have a handful of options that I want to touch on. A CAPTCHA can be enabled so that it would give an alphanumeric CAPTCHA at the bottom of the registration form, and they'd have to fill that in before they can submit. If we turn it off, they won't need that, and they can just proceed with submitting the registration. Enable multi-attendee registration will mean that there will be a box allowing them to add a secondary or a third, fourth, fifth registration to their registration form. So I'm going to leave that on for the purposes of this example. Allow anonymous registrations means that somebody will not be required to sign into our portal to register. If we were to set this to no, then the person would have to have an account and sign in to register or create an account and then they could register. Creating leads for event registrations will do just that. It'll create a lead, and then of course we can create notifications to tell the sales team, hey, so-and-so just registered for this event, and you might want to follow up with them because this event is about this product, and maybe there's an interest there. So for the purposes of this example, I'm going to set that to no as well, but I'll leave these two as yes. I'm going to show you what that looks like on the page in a minute, but I also want to turn our attention to the custom registration fields. This is really handy. We can create custom fields to put on our registration form so that we can collect the right information from our attendees. This could be things like food, dietary restrictions, interest, or in this case, we just want to know whether they have experience with it because that's going to kind of dictate the, the tone of our training. If everybody who's coming has zero experience, then maybe we're going to start in a slightly different place than where we would if, if it looks like everybody who's coming does have some experience. Okay, so we can create as many of these as we need to on this form by simply tapping this button and that quick create form will open up. So let's have a look at what this form looks like. Here's our internal D365 sales training. I'm going to go ahead and say register now. Here's our form. Very simplistic. We turned off the CAPTCHA, so we don't see the CAPTCHA, but we do have the ability to add another attendee because we left that setting to yes. We're going to go ahead and register for this event. Tammy's filled in the form. She's all ready to register. We can go ahead and check out. We get this confirmation page right away. I'm going to go ahead and jump back into our system. We now see on our record, I've refreshed it. We've got our event registration for Tammy, and we've even got her custom response. So the more people register, the more information we're going to get. Now, another thing that we can do with this is to create what are called passes. You'll notice them at the top of the registration and attendance section. So this allows us to create a selection of passes for the event. So for example, perhaps we have a conference coming up and we want to create a day one pass and a day two pass and a full event pass. We would have the ability to add a new pass. We'd click the new pass button. We'd give it a name, identify how many passes we want allocated. We can give it a price and then we would save and close and that would add the pass. I'm not going to do that this time around because we don't need passes for this event. Now, the other thing that the system will do is create a wait list. And this is actually on the very front page with respect to venue constraints. So if we have a venue that only has a certain number of spaces and perhaps the building code allows us to let in 100 people, well, then we want to tell it what to do when we hit that number. So if we give it a total number of people and then identify that we do want a wait list for this, we're going to see a few options pop up. Number of invitations per slot means if we have an opening in our event, it's going to send out a number of invitations on a first come first serve basis. The first one to respond will get the spot, the others will be added back to the waitlist. 
So in this case, we'll say let's add out one invitation per slot because I just want to go to the first person on the list and automatically register waitlisted contacts will automatically register those people who are on the waitlist. Now, for the purposes of this example, we don't need a waitlist. So I'm going to go ahead and set this to select and change this back to empty because we don't actually need to worry about having a waitlist. One of the really important things to note about registration and attendance is that there is no automatic confirmation. So when somebody registers for an event, you will have to build out whatever confirmation you want. And you can do that a couple of different ways. You could do it with a Power Automate or a workflow. You could also do it by adding these people to a segment and then adding that segment to a customer journey that says, hey, we see you registered for this event, right? You could have a series of welcome emails. You could maybe even build out event lead up campaign that's going to engage them in the, the content as it get as it grows closer, right? Two days out to send them this, one day out send them this, day of send them a confirmation, whatever the case may be. We have the capability of looking at all of the registrations in a list here. So on the left hand side I've navigated to event and event registrations and you'll see here are all of our active registrations and if we looked for Tammy who we just registered we would find her contact and her registration link right here to this specific event. So there's plenty you can do with the data that you're gonna get out of all of this registrations. And these features that we showed you with respect to the CAPTCHA and the event experience help to ensure that your attendees or your prospective attendees have a smooth registration experience. We've put links to relevant Microsoft Docs and Microsoft Learn information about the event management components of D365 Marketing down in the description below. Feel free to visit those for more granular detail. As always, if you have any questions about anything you've seen today or anything about the Dynamics 365 or Microsoft 365 space, feel free to reach out to C5 Insight. We would be happy to chat with you. We hope you've enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for more. We hope you have a great day.